Welcome back to another exciting VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are going to look at how to find last row using VBA. This is something that everyone struggles when they start working on VBA. But once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty easy. So let's get into it. We will look at a couple of methods to do this. If you don't have the file saved in XLSM already, you can save it as XLSM. Once done, open up your Visual Basic screen and let's start exploring the code. We have our favorite Excel file open for sales data. If we look at column A, we have a blank value at row 20. Other than that, the column has all of the values. If we look at column B, C, D and E, we don't have any missing values in these columns. All right. Our first method will be using end. So let's define a variable LR as integer. LR will store last row. And what you can do is let's say we start from range A1 and then we go to the end. So it's similar to what we do in Excel. Let's say I do control down key and this takes me to the last row. So let's replicate this in VBA. So range a1 so basically this is selecting range a1 and it says end and then you have a bunch of options you have excel down excel left right up we can select down for now and then we access the row for it so this is basically you can go to the last row and then save the row in it and then what we're gonna do is we can say debug.print we can actually do debug.print right here okay press f8 to step into the code run it and you can see you have row 19 here so the problem is that we have a missing value in column a which is the row 20 which means we cannot really use this method to find our last row. The second method is pretty much similar in which we come from bottom to up. So let's try it. I'm going to give this the last row. So 1048576. And then we use Excel up instead of Excel down. Okay, so this method works. The reason it works is because it's coming up from bottom. And as soon as it finds the non-blank cell, it stores the row number in there. All right, so the third method we can use is using used range property so let's do that dim lr as integer as before debug dot print to print the value and here we will say active sheet dot used range dot rows dot count f8 to step to the code and you see we have 50 as last row which is correct all right so for our fourth method we will use the find function this find function is similar to what we do in excel so let's say we press ctrl f the find box that opens up we will do something similar in excel vb as well so back to visual basic so let's define our variable that will hold the row number. We are going to use last row. Now we will need to set our last row equals to. So let's do that. We set a value using set keywords. Then we put the variable name and then we put equal. And then it says equal to whatever the value you put it. So we say active sheet dot cells dot find. This is basically replicating the find method of our Excel. Since the parameters we are going to give are not in exact sequence. So we can just give name variables. So we can put them in any sequence. So the first parameter is the value we need to find, which is a static. A static finds any value. And then we give search direction as Excel previous. After that, we will need to enclose this in, in an if block. So if we say if not last cell is nothing. So basically it's saying is that if there is some value in it, then store the value in last row and end the block. So let's test it. And you can see last row holds 50 as the row number, which is correct. For our last and fifth method, we will use special cells so let's add it here as before we will declare our variable and then we put it equals to last row equals active sheet dot cells and here we will use special cells within it we have a bunch of options so for example xl so we will use excel cell type last cell and then we will store the row for it okay f8 to step into the code and you can see we have 50 as a last row which is correct all right so this wraps up different methods of finding last row Choose the method that suits your specific scenario and preferences. Each method has its own advantages and may be suitable in certain situations. This wraps up the video. I hope you like the content. Till next time, happy coding.